You're watching the Free Pilot Training Channel, where today we're going to be discussing VFR sectionals and how we can use those to pick safe altitudes to fly at. As a pilot, some of the most dangerous situations that we get into are because of obstructions to flight. And some of the most common obstructions these days are man-made obstacles like this one. To help us avoid these, when these obstacles are taller than 200 feet, they're charted on our VFR sectional. Take a look at this obstacle here. This is the basic obstacle symbol. When we see this symbol, we know there's an obstacle here that's at least 200 feet tall, but less than 1,000. Let's zoom in a little bit closer so we can see exactly how tall this thing is. The upper bold number tells us the elevation of the top of the tower in mean sea level. The top of this particular tower is at 1,343 feet MSL. Then this lower number tells us the obstacle's height in feet above the ground. So this thing's height is 275 feet AGL. Here's a cool little bonus tip for you. If you take the elevation at the top of the tower and you subtract the height from that, this will give you your ground elevation at that specific spot. This can come in really handy when you're planning a flight in an area where you're not familiar with. Now check out this monster obstacle. This is a symbol you'll see when the tower is taller than 1,000 feet AGL. Notice they tell you exactly where the top of the tower is, the same way they do the smaller ones. Now let me ask you a question. How many obstacles are depicted right here? Now while this picture clearly shows two obstacles, it's impossible for us to know exactly how many are really there. And that's because this is a group obstacle symbol. When they build these charts, they make every effort to chart every obstacle individually. But if there are too many in one location and the chart becomes cluttered, they'll put the symbol here instead. And these numbers beside it indicate the tallest obstacle in that group. Another thing you might see when the chart starts getting too cluttered is that they'll leave out the height and only put the elevation of the obstacle. If they ask you what the height of this tower is on the test, you'll have to take this number and subtract the ground elevation from the nearest airfield. Now check this out. As I'm sure you're already aware, this is a windmill farm. But notice, the individual altitudes of these windmills aren't shown here. Instead, they give you the elevation of the tallest windmill in mean sea level right here. Just be careful with this though, because if you ever see the letters UC beside this number, that means this elevation is unverified. And speaking of that, you could potentially see these letters beside any tower. This just means that it's either under construction or the elevation at the top is unverified. For any one of these symbols, you could see these little lightning bolts on top of them. And that just tells us that these obstacles have high intensity lights on top of them. And that makes them just a little bit easier to spot. Now comes the important question. Just how close can I get to these towers and obstructions to flight? To figure that out, we need to pull out the Federal Aviation Regulations. Specifically, we're going to be looking in Part 91-119. First, everywhere on the map, if you lose an engine, you must be able to make an emergency landing without undue hazard to something or someone on the ground. But then, we have congested areas, and these are simply cities, towns, settlements, or any open assembly of people. In these areas, you need to keep your airplane a thousand feet above the highest obstacle within a 2,000 foot radius of the aircraft. Now on the test, they're going to tell you whether you're in a congested or uncongested area. But in real life, if I'm anywhere near these yellow areas, I'm going to call that area congested. So let's say I'm within 2,000 feet of this obstacle right here. At what altitude do I need to fly? Well, the elevation of the top of this tower is at 2,758 feet. So all I have to do is add 1,000 feet to that. That means if I fly at 3,758 feet MSL, I'm meeting this requirement. That being said, in other than congested areas, I can fly my airplane as low as 500 feet above the surface. Just be kind of careful if you do this because these taller towers can pop up out of nowhere. Here's something crazy though, over water and sparsely populated areas, you can fly your airplane as low as you want. You just can't get any closer than 500 feet to any person, vessel, vehicle, or structure. Now time for a pop quiz. Do you know what these blue numbers are in the middle of these 30 minute segments of latitude and longitude? These are called maximum elevation figures, and they're excellent tools for picking safe altitudes to fly at. Let me explain how these work. There are two ways that these are calculated. The first way is if a man-made obstacle is the highest thing in that quadrant. It looks like it's a tower in this group obstacle symbol that's 1,904 feet MSL. Then, most of the time, they add 100 feet to account for vertical error. Then, we simply add these numbers up and round to the next 100 feet. So in this case, we've got 2,100 feet. And that's where they get this number from. So theoretically, if you fly over this number within a 30 mile radius, you should be safe from any towers or other obstructions. The other way they calculate this is when natural terrain is the highest thing in that quadrant. They'll start by taking the elevation of that terrain. In this example, it's a mountain peak that's 13,684 feet. Then, once again, we add our 100 feet for vertical error. 
Now sometimes they do use half the contour level instead of the 100 feet, but you don't really need to know that for this training. Next, they add 200 feet, and that's because only obstacles over 200 feet are required to be charted on VFR sectionals. Because of that, there could be a 199 foot tower on the peak of this mountain, and they wouldn't be required to chart it. Then we simply add these numbers up, then round to the next 100 feet, and this gives us our maximum elevation figure. Thanks for studying with me today. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and be sure to check out this video or maybe this playlist. See ya!